seeing people's, uh, you know, like their theories about the show. It's so insane how in depth people can get where they're like, well, you know, Miguel okay. was wearing these jeans and these jeans, you know, or, or stuff like that, where it's like the salt, <laughs> the salt and pepper shakers in the background of this scene are owls and the blah, blah, blah's favorite character is an owl. So I think they're coming back. It's like, whoa. That was just, that was just at Pottery Barn. I don't know what to say it like that. that was just <laughs> was... How are you? Everything's fantastic over here. Awesome, awesome. Waiting. I'm glad to hear it. It looks nice in LA. Yeah, man. Where are you at right now? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's wow. not, it's not that nice 70 degree t-shirt weather, but it's still pretty nice, I will say. Very, very cool. What are you up to in Atlanta? Uh, just filming, just filming nice. up, uh, in Atlanta, uh, but today I had off, so I'm, I'm glad that we were able to make this happen. Yeah, man, me too. This is a long time coming. We got almost 10,000 fans in the building, so mm -hmm. very exciting. Um, I know they have a lot of questions, I have a lot of questions, but I think first we got to take it back to the beginning. You're a native, a native Angelino, is that yep. correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. born and raised, spent with... my whole life out here, or I guess out there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It feels a little weird to be out in Atlanta for a few months and be, uh, you know, here and there. But Los Angeles is definitely my home. It's my one and only home for sure, for sure. Yeah, man. What was it like? Kind of obviously entertainment's big in L.A. What was it like kind of growing up and transitioning at, at such an early age into the into the acting? I think I was fortunate enough to uh, have grown up most of my life in Los Angeles and, and uh, have people around me, but I think more so my family, my parents who uh, really had my best interest in mind and and kind of uh, made it a possibility for me to to be in the acting industry. I think they had to make a lot of sacrifices and, and I'm super appreciative for that. Um, but Los Angeles, I think, uh, you know, something that is a little interesting is, you know, you grow up in Los Angeles, but a lot of times Hollywood feels so far away. It feels like such a distant, like not even just location wise, but just the idea of being able to get into the acting industry feels so far away for a lot of people. So, you know, I hope that in time that can be more accessible to because I feel like there's a lot of um, favor, like favoritism in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, getting the opportunity to be on a show like this is great and all, but it doesn't really mean much if I'm not opening the door for other people, other Latinos, other people of color. So, so I think that's the most important thing for me. That's least. huge. And I know that's been a topic of conversation, especially recently, but it's nice for someone like you, who's, who's younger and, and coming up so quickly to have that mindset, you know? it's not, A lot of times it takes a while to mature into that role, but I feel like you starting out now at, at this age is gonna be very powerful for those who are trying to follow in your footsteps, so. Hopefully, you can Hopefully. only hope, you can only hope. You can only hope. Uh, all right, so obviously everybody wants to know, we gotta talk about the Cafecito series, but um, before we get to that, everyone wants to know about Cobra Kai. Um, I guess first, there's been like 1,000 questions. I'm trying to get through all of them. First, uh, I, you know, I'm also from LA. And so I, I grew up, like you said, I know what this weird entertainment thing is like. Um, and and like, like you said, Hollywood does seem so far away. Um, but because I grew up sort of, uh, my mom was a screenwriter. And so I grew up watching a lot of movies. And um, Karate Kid was one of those movies, one of those series of movies that I saw as a kid and just kind of fell in love with. Um, what was it like? Did you feel a lot of pressure, you know, in this reprisal of such an iconic series? And how was the preparation uh, for such an iconic role that you that you now have? I think honestly, there wasn't a lot of pressure at first, just because we didn't really have an audience. You know, we were there was not really any expectation. There was no uh, there was no bar to fulfill. So we were kind of just making the most with a show that, you know, looking back on it, was a very culty show. When we were on YouTube, the show felt big and the show mm -hmm. felt like we had found its home, but it wasn't really until, um, you know, that first season dropped on YouTube that we realized like, oh crap, a lot of people, a lot more people than we thought, you know, were interested in this. And, and I'm super appreciative that, you know, YouTube gave us that platform to kind of, um, find our footing and now you know moving to netflix it's just so many more eyes are being put on the project and it really is like night and day um yeah. but with that being said you know i think 
our show still wants to do the same thing. You know, we've moved platforms, but I don't think the show changes at all. I think it still maintains that heart, that serialized kind of,、uh, you know, format and really just trying to do what it does best, which is bring back this continuation of the story of,、uh, you know, Daniel and Johnny without making it too corny. I think it, it can be corny in, in some places, but I think it needs to be. I, I don't think there's any way to make this a super, super serious show, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, I think those, those moments, those quote unquote corny moments you're talking about, are actually really endearing and like contribute、yeah. to why people like the show so much. I know when, when it came out on Netflix, I watched almost both seasons in one day. I was like, <laughs> I was like,、uh, like zombie falling asleep, like,、oh, just one more episode. It was, it's that kind of show, man, where you just want to know what happens. And, and I think、uh, in this viral age that we live in, Um, it's easy to get those cheap laughs or those cheap thrills, but it's hard to, to carry out an entire series where you're keeping a, a captive audience. So, kudos to you.、Um, what was the training like? <clears throat> a lot of people want to know what training you went through、um, to do that role and, and how many, like, what stunts did you have to do? Did you ever get hurt? Like, what was, what was that like? The training regimen, I would say, up until this year for our fourth season was pretty consistent. Like,、uh, I, I would say we usually have a month of training before we go out and film, and then maybe two or three days of training while we're out in Atlanta. This season, it's we're training every day we're not working, which definitely makes it a little bit harder. But I think now, as everyone's getting older, you know, I started the show, I had just turned 16. So,、uh, you know,、wow. now I'm about to be 20. So,、uh, having,、uh, seeing everyone grow over time, I think our priorities, you know, while maybe seasons one and two, I was,、uh, you know, playing video games any second I could when I, when I wasn't filming. Now it's kind of like now we go to the gym or now we go rock climbing or ride our bikes and stuff like that. So, I think you start to see what. And food obviously is a huge portion. That's, <laughs> that's probably、Gotta、the hardest part.、Actually. Now that I'm thinking,、uh, the hardest part isn't the gym or rock climbing or any of that or training with karate and all of that. It's, it's definitely the food. That's, that's the thing that gets me the most. Because I just want to eat whatever I want. I want to I wanna have fun, you know, and, and there's, there's, you know,、uh, I don't know. It feels like a lot of the people, not a lot of the people, but the people who are on the show are all on like the. The chicken and rice diet, and I hate the chicken and rice diet. I no, can't no, do it. Especially、so. as a Latino, man. We need the al pastor. We need I'm the, like, damn. But, you know, luckily being in Atlanta, you know,、uh, we, we can't really do much. We, you know, the, the COVID regulations are pretty, pretty strict over here. So it makes it a little bit easier. We end up cooking a lot of food at home, which definitely helps. But the training regimen this year has been more strict than ever, and I, I actually like it. I think it's actually.、Um, Beneficial and, and hopefully, you know, when we get back to LA, I'll be able to keep up with it. But it's a little bit harder when、uh, everything in Los Angeles is pretty much shut down. <laughs> Definitely.、Um, so you're, you're shooting season four in Atlanta as we speak? Yes, 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 yes. Wow. Yes. What is,、um, do you notice any difference between sort of when you started and, and now? And, and how does the, another question we got was, was the cast dynamic? You know, like what, what, what is it like?、Um, Forming these close bonds with all your castmates, and、uh, how has that relationship evolved over time? Yeah, I think, you know, it's something that was super fortunate filming the show is that we really did connect on a family level from the get go. It, 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 there wasn't any sort of hesitation when it came to getting to know each other, I think, and a lot of that comes from. We didn't know anybody else in Atlanta. It wasn't like we, you know, <laughs> when we weren't filming, it was like we were at home alone. So, so it really, I think,、uh, made the process of getting to know each other co- go, like, come and go much quicker just because we're like, well, it's the weekend. I don't want to sit at home alone. Let's hang out with some of the other people on our show. And I think for, the, for that reason, it made it, you know, after the first season, it felt like we were all a family.、Um, You know, going into it, going into our fourth season now, I'd say the biggest changes really just have to do with COVID. We have to be a lot more careful. So、mm-hmm. that means, you know, fortunately, I get to live with some of the guys from the show. But I think if it wasn't for that, I might go crazy. I, I really can't. It's already, it's already hard enough, you know, living alone in, in LA and, you know, seeing my friends and stuff like that. But I think filming a show where, Can't really go out much, I think it would be much harder. But, you know,、uh, it really is a family, and I'm, and I'm really、uh, 
you know, appreciative and, and grateful that we really, like, I can't think of a person on our show who we don't get along with. So, so I think that that's super rare. And I think that that's something that we don't take lightly. And we're like, all right, this is like, we got a good thing going on. Let's, let's not ruin this. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right. We literally have five, over 500 questions. Uh, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, this is, this is, uh, probably the most popular question. Oh, man. Uh, before we jump off of Cobra Kai is what was your favorite scene to shoot and why? Oh man, my favorite scene to shoot. Um, you know, I, I feel like any of the scenes, uh, you know, the season one, all of those scenes with Johnny, I feel like were probably some of my favorite. Just, you know, the dynamic between Johnny, this guy who really had a bad sh like he had a bad run with his own son so he's kind of finding that in Miguel and Miguel who didn't really have a father but is looking for that in Johnny I think you know uh provides for some pretty funny rapport between the two of them I think they're they're a funny duo and I think you know in season three we see even more of that and in season four it's just gonna take that to a whole new level which I'm super excited about uh but you know I guess my favorite one scene is probably the scene with Johnny when we're in this burger shop and he's talking about you know i didn't really have a great uh relationship with my son when he was born and i don't want to fuck this up with you so let's uh like if i like i'm kind of working through this and i know you're working through this so but i just want you to know that i appreciate you and i think that's probably my favorite scene because there's not really a lot of like uh i feel like for miguel at least it's a lot of uh dr like uh there's a lot of drama within the kids and themselves so having uh you know some nice <laughs> adults on the show is, is, is uh, those are always pretty fun yeah actually I, I know exactly the scene you're talking about it was very very touching scene <laughs> and it made me think about you know my relationship with my dad and it, I don't know I think it, it, it is very personal for a lot of people um, which I think uh, again is why that show is so successful because you're representing not only culturally are you representing a, a lot but but emotionally and sort of spiritually I think karate um, you know, I had never been interested in karate before watching Karate Kid and then <laughs> reinvigorated that interest with Cobra Kai, you know, because I hadn't seen the movies in a minute. Mm -hmm. And and once I saw Cobra Kai, I'm like, oh, my God, this is something very special. Um, I guess one last question about Cobra Kai is and it's not really about Cobra Kai. It's more about the sort of tenets and components of karate. Um, mm. What's like, what's the best takeaway that you've gotten from that karate training or just from the overall kind of ethos of, of karate? I think um, it's just that to have patience, you know, good things take time. And I think, you know, in, in the day where everything is so easily accessible, everything's on your phone, you can, you know, with the push of a button, you can buy anything. I think like there's something so rewarding about training karate and you know at the end of the month or at the end of the week finally being able to do a move that you weren't able to do or stuff like that like there it's so much more fulfilling than just being like oh i can't do this boom there we go like i i think that the biggest thing that karate time has taught me is is just to be patient and that you know it's okay to not be the best at everything but you there you, there's things that you can not be the best at but that just means that you have to work on them and i think uh you know, going into this fourth season, I've learned more than ever that, you know, it's it's okay to not be great at everything. And, you know, to kind of, I think that that's something super important. Like there's, everyone has flaws and everyone has things that they're not great at and, and, every, oh, and everyone has things that they're super great at. Like there's, there's things that, you know, Tanner's super great at that I'm not great at. And there's things that I'm great at that Jacob's not, you know what I'm saying? So, so I don't think, you know, you have to be, you don't have to be the master of everything. You can you can be good at the stuff that you're good at, and um, you know, yeah, I, I'd say that's it. Word. Um, okay, now a couple things. I went through your Instagram, and I noticed there's a big transformation between Cobra Kai Zolo mm -hmm. and like out on the street. Just myself. Zolo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which I like both. I mean, one's very a little bit more like clean cut, goody two shoes, mm -hmm. uh, and the other one you're like 
Cholo Zolo Godfather over here. Yeah, um, the long hair which, beard. Yeah, it was fire. And to be honest, I fluctuate between the two also. So I'm wondering, um, do you have a preference? Obviously, you know, I think you you like the long hair when you're when you're chilling on your own. But um, long hair, short hair, facial hair, no facial hair. I think you know the. The funny thing about working on this show is that right before I'd went on the audition for Cobra Kai, I'd shaved my head. So oh, wow. I attribute Miguel having short hair for me just going into that audition. With <laughs> <a show. laughs> like, like I had my super, super long hair for my whole life, basically up until and then and then I did that audition and I sh I just shaved my head. And I feel like maybe if I had gone into that audition with long hair, Miguel would have had long hair. But oh. it's kind of, uh, you know, what's happened has happened but 100 percent when i'm not filming i love to have the long hair the short hair and just the short facial hair and stuff like that especially as i get older like there's days where we have to shave twice a day and whatnot so kind wow. of when we're when we're when we're not filming i'm like i'm, I'm done with this i'm not cutting yeah, my hair yeah. i'm not shaving my face like I'm get the going, razor out of my face <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm going full incognito i'm not you know um and i think it definitely helps like I, i've uh I've learned to appreciate kind of privacy over quarantine and, and as this show has uh, gotten the chance to get into so many new faces, it's, yeah. um, it's, there's something nice about, you know, having the long hair and the beard and I wear glass. Well, I guess now I have contacts, but I used to wear glasses. So like having that sense of privacy and the ability, cause I can't, I really can't imagine what it would be like if there was no quarantine and all of this was happening when everyone was out and about. Like I, I really do value being able to go out and have dinner with my family or going to, you know, ride a bike somewhere, going on hikes and stuff like that. And I feel like that might not have been the case had there not been a quarantine and had cool. I have super short hair and look like my character at the time. And I think it also makes it helpful to kind of differentiate between, you know, I, I feel like unfortunately um, people get uh, like what's the word for it? associated with their characters so easily like i the fact of the matter is is that at the end of the day miguel is a character and i'm you know and while we are similar in a lot of ways we're also different in a ton of different ways so yeah i think it makes it a little bit more helpful to people be for so, so that people can be like uh all right this guy is is more than just this character on cobra kai or uh and kind of develop their own opinions about me as a person rather than just being like oh it's the kid from cobra kai you know Wait, you're not like that in real life? Wait a second, what? You, you know what I'm saying? So I do know. I mean, I think that's such a great point. And a lot of people forget because, again, that just speaks to your acting that you're so, <laughs> you're such a Well, I think, I, I, I yeah, I, I think it, I, I don't think it necessarily speaks to the acting just because I feel like, you know, the, at the end of the day, like, uh, it, it, I think it just kind of speaks to how, you know, like I was saying earlier, like how distant Hollywood feels to to a lot of people and how like yeah. how right. it's a little bit hard. And, and I think even with like the adjustment with social media, having this whole new following has been a little bit difficult just because you start to really see that, like, unfortunately, like I at the end of the day, I, like having this new following, you're definitely a, like a personality. And as much as I wish that I could distance myself from that, you start to see how many more people are like, oh, I love you. I like, oh my gosh, da da da. When at the end of the day, it's like, well, like you don't, you don't know me. And I think that that's, <laughs> it, that's like, that's kind of hard and it, it might come off as rude, but really it's not like I, I, I mean this in the nicest way is that like, why it, like, I don't know a lot of these people. So it's hard, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's one thing to love a character like I love Shia LaBeouf characters, but I can't say that I love Shia LaBeouf. Like I don't know the guy. I don't. You know what right. I'm saying? I, right. I can't say that. So, so I think that's probably been the hardest adjustment with all of this. And and I hate to be like, oh, I have all these problems. You know what I'm saying? Because I, <laughs> I feel like I'm definitely in a fortunate position to kind of uh, sit here and talk with people like you and, and have this platform. But but I think it's definitely a weird adjustment. Definitely, definitely. And I feel that. And I think an upside to that is, you know, I've seen on these comments already, um, despite the difficulty, you know, people are saying, you know, your characters inspired me to, to do karate, inspired me to be a better person, a better, a more thoughtful. You know, there's all these things where even though they don't know you, I think they do share that personal connection and it's improved their lives. So 
I think that part is awesome. I that think part's that, awesome. I can, I can I can totally get behind that. I can totally yeah. get behind you know even even the you know I feel like all the characters on the show you know having that like. I think that's what's nice about television is that you can create scenarios that seem specific and that feel relatable, and that you can say, "Oh, I see a little bit of myself in Miguel, or I see some of myself in Johnny," and being able to kind of reflect on your own life from watching different stuff. I think it gets a little dangerous when, uh, like, I think at the end of the day, they're two very different. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end Definitely. of the day, that's fantasia, and that's you know. We're making a show, and it's meant to be entertaining, and it's meant to be dramatic and whatnot. And I think、uh, you know, there's a fine line. But I, I think it's it's been a great opportunity, and I'm and I'm glad it's like you know what I'm saying. Like、uh, I'm glad that people are, are at least a little bit inspired by my character, and not like I'm not on some like Game of Thrones show where like、yeah. <laughs> look at everyone, and you're doing such a great job. I wish I was more like you know what I'm saying. So so I, I think that's、uh, I think this is you know fine. Yeah, man.、Um, okay, so. I saw a post、uh, where a fan of yours compared you two different cats. Yes,、uh, <laughs> which really cracked me up because I have a cat myself, and I just thought it was very creative of that person yeah,、um, so、to do、random. that. <laughs>、um, what What are some of the craziest or most creative things that you've received、uh, with this new following from from your fans? Um. Let's see. That's a, that's a fun. That's a I, you know. To be honest,、uh, I I try to stay away or not away, but I try to stay off of social media as as much as I can. I think、right. that you know,、um, admittingly, I do kind of get caught sometimes in like the it it just like even especially at the beginning of quarantine, I was like I was on TikTok, I was on Instagram, and it just you know. <laughs> It's it's one of those things that feels so fulfilling in the moment, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so like these videos are so funny, or I'm watching all these YouTube videos and they're so great. But I think when you finish that, you're like, wait, that was three hours ago. I really did nothing. Like I hit like I've been I, there. I, I, I've been I there. I think it it really put it into perspective. Like I'd rather be working out for an hour. I'd rather be practicing. You know, some hobby, or I'd rather be writing a script, or I'd rather be trying to, you know, get better at the stuff or or cook,、uh, than spend an hour on TikTok and at the end of it be like, well, what did I get? Some, you know, and that's not to say that there's anything wrong with TikTok. I I think that or any of the social media, you know, platforms、yeah. for that matter. I think they're all. I think they all have their own place, and I think they're all great in their own way.、Um, but I just think that recently I've kind of tried to stay as much as I can to. You know, use it for what it's for, and then be like, "All right, now take some time off." You know, you know,、yeah. go back. Just because I think it's super easy to、uh, to get caught into it. Like I definitely, I definitely have been there, and I definitely still like I'm I'm still definitely learning as much as I can about it. So, so I don't.、Um, I think the coolest things have been the the fan arts have been super cool. I think people are、yeah. super creative, and it really just. Blows my mind how good at art some people are. I definitely did not get that gene. I suck at <laughs> me either. You know, with, you know, drawing on a on a piece of paper. So I think it, I think that part has been the coolest and seeing different people's interpretations of the characters or、right. their art styles. That that's been the coolest. And then you know the 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 other thing that's kind of weird is seeing people's、uh, you know like their theories about the show. It's so insane how in depth people can get where they're like, well. You know, Miguel、okay. was wearing these jeans and these jeans, you know, or, or stuff like that, where it's like <laughs> the, salt, the salt and pepper shakers in the background of this scene are owls, and the blah blah blah's favorite character is an owl. So I think they're coming back. It's like, whoa, that was just that was just at Padre Barn. I don't know what to say like that. That was, <laughs> that was, that was not. I, you went a little too deep in that, but I think it's awesome. I think it. it <laughs> It shows like how engaged some people are, and how、yeah. how much like it it really means to people. And I think that that's you know awesome. You really can't wish for anything more in a show. And I think that you know while sometimes there are a little some that I'm like, whoa, who did you hear that from? Like that was way too accurate. Like who 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 are your sources? I think there's some other ones where I'm like, ah, these are like that would be cool, but you know you'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay. Good shit. Good stuff. <laughs> Can we curse on it? I don't know.、Um, so, picking backing off of what you said about quarantine, you're saying you'd like rather do a lot of other stuff. Are there any new skills, maybe, or anything new 
you know, yeah. besides social media <laughs> that you've been that you've been getting into, um, or anything you picked up or learn more about? Um, cooking has probably been the biggest one. I definitely, uh, and especially, I guess, I moved out over quarantine, so living alone, I really started to appreciate cooking so much more just because I think there's one thing in having the convenience of being able to go out and eat food and or order in and all of that, but that first month of quarantine, I was just ordering food every day and I was eating wing stop all the time and doing this and I just yeah. told it was like you know screw it whatever I'm I'm going all out you know I live alone I could um, <laughs> um and then I started to just be super like oh I, I it really just made me be like oh this is this is not sustainable it's totally not sustainable and and uh and I think it's so it's so much more fulfilling to like cook a dish and be like, all right, this is delicious, or this is trash, and I need to get better at, like, something is wrong here, you know? Um, but my least favorite thing is washing the dishes, so Damn. that's 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 been the biggest thing to make me like, oh, I don't want to cook, because I, I, you know, prepare the food, and I make, you know, whatever it is, and then I eat it, and I'm like, perfect, I'm so full, like, that was such an amazing meal. I can't believe I pulled that off. And I look behind me and I see all these dishes in the kitchen. And I'm like, damn it. Like, the, the day doesn't end, you know. But but I think it really has made me more mindful as like being conservative with my with my pots and pans and stuff like that. And I'll be like, I can just cook the same thing in the same pan. It's not a yeah. big deal. You know? <laughs> it's, it's not a big deal. And I think it also has made me way more of a clean person just because I don't know, like, that, that first week, like the dishes were just piling up, and I remember going to the sink one day and just being like, "This is disgusting! Like this, I cannot live like this. I can't be one of these people." So, uh, it definitely has made me way more clean. You know, at least I hope so. I feel you, man. I, and I again, similar trajectory. I also started cooking more, but then I have dishes just stacking up, and I'm like, "Do I cook or do I?" <laughs> <laughs> What a word. I just, I'm almost at a standstill because it's like, don't know what to do. Um, any favorite dish that you could tell the people about? I am a pretty great master at making chicken parmesan. That's wow. That's definitely, that's definitely like the go to. Wow. I've been having me ladies over at the new house, but when my boys come over, we definitely mess up some chicken parmesan. It's, it's, word. it's that's, that's been my favorite. Also, just like, I don't know, my favorite food is sushi, so getting to make sushi at home, even though it turns out way worse than if I were to go to a <laughs> restaurant, is so much fun. Like, it, it's so, so fun, uh, you know, making sushi and stuff like that. So that, that's yeah. been nice. Um, I love Korean food. Making some, you know, some kaibi uh, with some rice and whatnot has been super great. But just kind of trying to diversify. I think, you know, before quarantine, I was like, scrambled eggs and... And, you know, sausages are my favorite. And I do have a special place for chicken apple sausages in my heart. But wow, I feel that. Just, trying to diversify has, has been the biggest thing. So you said no ladies over. No ladies in your life right now? No ladies over, no. no I feel like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's A, quarantine is hard, but also, like, it's being uh, someone who fortunately gets to, like, go to Atlanta to film for four months and then get mm -hmm. to go to this place for four months. It kind of provides for not the most stable you know like it's kind of hard to build relationships and friendships over quarantine just because you're like unless you were my friend before quarantine like it's kind of hard to make any friends like i'm not we're not hanging out in person like yeah there's facetime and zoom and all that but it's kind of like uh i don't know so i think and it's just kind of easier i think uh i'm at a point in my life where i'm like eh, i I, I got my boys, like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know, I, I think um, there's no rush. I feel you. Um, and then lastly, we got to wrap up. Unfortunately, um, this has been amazing. Just want to ask you about the Cafecito series uh, with Latino Lido Leaders Network. Um, March 25th, I believe. Just tell us a little bit about uh, what you'll be doing with them and, and what the event is all about. Yeah, we're going to be doing a panel. Um, I got you know the opportunity to be honored as like a young emerging artist um in this 
industry and I'm super appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's cool to see uh, award shows and I guess like organizations based entirely around being a Latino. And I think that that's super important. So I'm, um, you know, so we're doing this, this panel on the 25th. Um, I don't know the time, I'm, I'll post the time later. I, with being on the East Coast makes things so different because everything happens in LA and I'm like 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. <laughs> so, so I don't want to mess up the time. So I won't even, I won't even, you know, go into that. But, um, but I think it'll just be kind of talking about, um, you know, like the, the usual stuff like Cobra Kai and whatnot, but also like trying to, like I was saying earlier, open the doors for more people of color, um, but especially more Latinos in this industry, just because it's it's a little worrisome that, you know, Latinos are the number one moviegoers and the number one consumer for television and movies and stuff like that, while simultaneously also being the least represented. So I think this hopefully can put a spotlight on that and hopefully just be a small moment to, uh, you know, appreciate all of the Latinos in this industry and really highlight the the achievement this year and move forward and say you know this is great and all and we have this moment where we get to celebrate this but you know there needs to be more of this there needs to be more more doors open there needs to be more people uh, of color in positions of power in this industry so you know it's not enough that you know uh we need to be the ones making the decisions in the, in the big you know the big rooms so that's kind of what it's about i'm excited for it um, and, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see you uh, on the 25th. It'll be fun. Sweet, man. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It's been awesome, awesome to you. you. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Hopefully we'll get you in the studio when all this craziness ends and uh, do a real chat. Make it, it happen. Make it happen. All right, brother. Well, look, have a great day, man. Okay? You too. Thanks.